Welcome back to another episode of Nidal. This, I'm pretty sure, is uh, the one episode you've been waiting for. We're going to continue working on the marina. That's kind of anticlimactic, but uh, that's actually what we're going to be doing. And here's some good news. Um, remember how in the previous episode I said that we may not finish this in two episodes? Well, turns out I'll be done by the end of this one. So you're going to enjoy some cinematics at the very end that pretty much will will be the final state of this. And just so you know, this is not gonna be the only marina in the city. We're we're probably gonna have more than one in, in all the other uh, coasts that we have. I mean, we're surrounded by islands here. And I still don't know how much uh, I wanna venture out of this city center in terms of you know how much the city will be spreading. I kind of make new decisions uh, on that basically every week, but uh, Definitely, we have a road that goes to, to the other end of this island, and I'm pretty sure we're going to have another marina or some kind of uh, a boat launch of, of sorts uh, there as well. So uh, stay tuned for that. It's probably going to take several episodes, <laughs> especially because we're just working on a marina right now, and I don't want to you know, do similar, uh, similar projects. Uh, we're starting things off by aligning this little uh, corner of the marina. I wanted it to be perfectly parallel, or at least as parallel as I can to uh, one of the rivers, the one that's immediately adjacent to it. And another thing that I wanted, uh, and this is something that I've noticed in marinas across the world, at least the ones I've seen, uh, they usually have a couple restaurants, uh, specifically in this case, this is a seafood restaurant, which I think kind of matches the theme of this uh, neighborhood here or this area of the city. And uh, in just a couple minutes, I'm gonna be adding a second and third restaurant slash fast food joint slash gas station um, because uh, that little corner of the map that I was tweaking just a minute ago the part that I that I wanted to get you know perfectly parallel to the um, to the river is going to be actually some fuel pumps for uh, the boats um, I did end up moving some of these uh, parking spaces I wasn't super happy with the position of the handicap spots as well as the actual parking spaces themselves and now that we have a purpose for people to actually get to the marina besides you know parking there to to get uh, into their boat um i'd sort of rearrange the uh the spaces so that uh, they would make more sense assuming people will actually go to the restaurants as opposed to just the boats and um primarily i want to sort of take advantage of this uh, empty gap here in the middle of this super wide parking lot road and I just uh, went for some of these uh, gorgeous cobblestone textures by Beer Monkey, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, just to separate the traffic a little bit, I ended up uh, using these uh, curves that I've used before, uh, like two episodes ago for the bike lane that I made on the shoulder of the National Highway. You can go watch that episode if you, if you want to. But uh, I've been using this uh, curved uh, network path as uh, some kind of divider for traffic. And I think it's like pretty efficient for that. Here's something art that was happening i was trying to move those notes i should probably talk to a keyboard about this but i was trying to move them and they kept like snapping to some invisible thing uh it's clearly some kind of bug because obviously i had i always have uh, snapping off but i don't know it was just kind of finicky you can see that they're not like perfectly aligned they're kind of off depending on which angle you see them at uh, they kind of jump and, and and go to like a new location so it was kind of hard to position them i ended up settling with that and uh i also sort of uh, staged these uh, different combinations of tables and chairs that way i can just copy and paste them and create a, a bit of a random pattern uh that that thing that you just saw there ago uh, a second ago the the road disappearing i was so upset about that i mean that that happens to me like at least two three four times per episode where i would just go to the bulldozer and instead of bulldozing the one microscopic prop that i want to delete it just deletes like the whole network that sort of makes all of that uh, uh, that thing come together, and it's kind of frustrating because no, I mean it's really it's honestly it's an easy fix, but it's just like you're like really focused on this tiny microscopic thing, and then just suddenly half of your screen changes and not really what you were expecting. So that was kind of annoying. Um, and uh, over here, uh, changing uh, sites of this marina, we're actually going to be adding a gas station. So. 
in my mind, and usually I've seen this uh, in real life, I don't know exactly how it works, but uh, I assume there's some pipe connection underground that, uh, well, we have the pumps on the top, uh, or at least uh, near the road, and then some underground uh, fuel system brings the, uh, well, the stored fuel to the pumps right by the water. Um, took me a little while to find the proper gas station. There are not that many good looking gas stations in the workshop, at least not generic ones. Um, or the ones that are there, they usually come pre-built with some, I don't know, like actual asphalt and pavement on their own. Or in this case, this one is kind of huge and I was planning on using this for that rest area that we never finished, uh, like many, many episodes ago. But um, I don't know, I made it work, I think. Uh, I'm pretty happy with how this one came out, but I would prefer if this wasn't, you know, that long. Um, and so many, so many, it was kind of overkill, the number of, uh, uh, pumps that this uh, gas station had and like I said most of the gas stations that I've seen in the workshop They're just they they're not very good looking models. They have like pretty low quality textures uh, In many cases, it's just copies of actual real gas stations uh, and I'm doing my best to try to use generic brands uh, In this city and just in general in my projects I, I try to not use real brands as much as I can or at least you know to the degree that I can avoid using them. And um, this one, I don't know if, if it's a real one. It kind of looks like it is a real one. It's, I think it's called Smith's or something like that. Um, but I don't know, just looks nice. And the fact that I didn't recognize the brand, it's good enough <laughs> for me for now. Uh, going back to the actual marina, obviously I had to like move these uh, props that we use for stairs uh, a whole bunch of different times. Um, just to cover some of the imperfections of how the docks sort of meet the ground and all the networks that are somewhat hidden underground. There's there's a lot of finicky, finicky. That's not a word. Uh, I was gonna say finicky things, and I just went for finicky. Anyways, um, there's just a lot that's going on there, and it's causing some visual glitches. So using props in this case, stairs, and now uh, those bushes, I'm kind of able to fool you into thinking that everything looks great when it's not. Um, there's a lot of those little hacks all over the city, just so you know. <laughs> but you know, that's uh, I, I'm I'm usually I'm usually pretty open about uh, whenever something like I, I can't do exactly what I want and it ends up being some kind of inferior uh, decoration method, uh, if if you want to put it in those terms. So I'm pretty open about that. I don't I don't mind saying it aloud. And more often more often than not, I, I usually would go back. And like refactor things, uh, I've done that many, many times in previous projects and in this one as well. In fact, I sort of uh, like this new little cluster of bushes that I that I came up with. So I'm kind of sort of transitioning and gradient into areas that we already detailed, uh, specifically around the bike path that runs in between the two. Uh, major roads. And uh, this is some kind of uh, fuel reservoir that I figured would be part of this whole facility uh, based on what I was saying just a minute ago on how there's probably some underground uh, pipe that connects this and the pumps right by the water. They're kind of offset. Um, in retrospect, I should have put that like on you know, in between the gas station and the actual pumps by the water. It's kind of off to the side, but I think it still looks pretty good. It looks plausible, which is ultimately what I'm, uh, what I'm aiming for. And uh, over here, this is the second restaurant. Uh, I guess the third one will be the Dunkin' Donuts. And that's yeah, that's another brand that I, I wasn't super happy to use, but that's like such a classic like gas station slash fast food restaurant combo that I just couldn't help myself. Um, this restaurant is, I think it's a vanilla asset. It's pretty generic, uh, nothing, uh, nothing too crazy there. So I just took advantage of the props that already came with it, which are not amazing, you know, those like uh, backyard tiles are okay, but like those rounded uh, tables that are in like random colors, wasn't a huge fan of those. Uh, and honestly, I wasn't a huge fan of the color of the roof either, so I just uh, went ahead with the uh, painter mod and, well, changed the color of the uh, of the roof. So that, it, I don't know, it kind of blends in with, uh, with the elements around it a little bit better. Um, also, one thing that I wanted to add, since uh, this marine is not going to have a lot of things on it, besides, you know, the boats and... Uh, usually marines are kept pretty clean, I noticed. There's not like a lot of debris and random boxes and things laying around. Everything is like pretty uh, tight and, and looking nice. So I mostly went ahead and added, well in this case I'm adding the pumps as you can see, but I went ahead and added those uh, all looking uh, lamps. 
and uh, some well i'm also adding here some some tires to prevent the boats from actually hitting the edge there and uh life preservers pretty much all over the place as well as uh some more lights in the uh floating docks that you're gonna see me add in just a second i'm getting ahead of myself as usual <laughs> but um basically once you look at this and uh, in the cinematics at the end it will just look like it's like pretty heavy in terms of detail there's like a lot going on in between all these like walkways that i'm laying down now but in fact it's actually just a handful of props that are repeated every every so uh i guess tiles if you want to use that uh unit of measurement and uh i don't know it just looks uh, pretty believable and it's not super you know uh, prop usage is not crazy i guess is what i'm trying to say um i was also sort of uh, doing my best to keep in mind the different sizes of the boats that will be using this like inner channels in between all these uh, uh floating uh walkways um so there's a, a lot of trial and error and you're gonna see me throughout the process here of uh moving these walkways just uh, adjusting things uh, and removing others and copying and pasting chunks of boats. I guess that's coming in the next clip. But in the meantime, another thing that I wanted to do is add a little bit of green to the uh, rock formations. So usually these, uh, from what I've noticed, they don't have a lot of vegetation. They're they usually like pretty clean. Um, I'm I'm guessing they use mostly rocks to build these uh, jetties as opposed to dirt and then rocks on top to sort of keep it together. Uh, so there's not a lot of uh, not a lot of fertile ground, I'm guessing, for, for plants to grow. There is some algae, of course, by the, by the edges of this, and that's why I'm using those uh, breakwater rocks that I made for Sinu forever ago that are a little bit more mossy, like darker, and obviously have a wet texture. And... Um, Together with the buoys, and I don't know if you noticed, but I also added like a fuck horn of some sort. Like it's just a random, like loudspeaker that's connected to a box that I think is an H, uh, HVAC, like AC. <laughs> uh, but it just looks like a proper base. It's gonna make more sense in the cinematics too, hopefully. But uh, just wanted to add some detail to the area. The buoys, by the way, they're red and green. And from up oh, to it, I've I've done quite a bit of research on this. I couldn't find a straight answer to when to use these uh, colors. So as far as I can tell, going basically downstream with the river, you would have green to your uh, right and red to your left. And uh, that's that's one of the charts that I was able to find that was like pretty clear. Uh, everything was kind of technical. I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of comments down below with people explaining how uh, how they're supposed to be uh, place hopefully i got them right in the first try i somehow doubt it but i also didn't quite know how to you know how many of them i needed if i needed on both ends of the jetties or if these are to be used like much further like in the middle of the water i added some like secondary buoys there just to sort of mark where both uh, jetties end but uh, yeah i don't know i think it looks okay like realistic i kind of went crazy with buoys there so i removed a couple but I think it's it's mostly mostly okay. Hopefully, hopefully you'll let me know uh, how how bad or how good I, I I was able to make that in the comment section. Uh, over here, since this area was already looking pretty good, and I didn't want to add more props than I needed, and also there was no need for extra props, I just went ahead and added some concrete expansion joints, which add a crazy amount of detail. I love how those look. I've been using that technique for a couple of years now. And it always works. <laughs> it's kind of like, uh, 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 I feel like I'm cheating every time I, I do that. But uh, yeah, I think it came out right. And also adding uh, some trash cans and some benches pretty much all over the place. Uh, this uh, area, I'm not sure I love how this came out, to be honest. Like those giant uh, pedestrian crossings just for the parking spaces. I figure they will be a little bit smaller. Uh, given the location of those parking spaces. So I might come back later and remove just a row of those uh, uh, markings. Over here, I'm adding uh, another one of these wooden fences. We've been using this fence a lot in the downtown uh, area. So if you're interested, you can go back and check out that episode. But uh, this is sort of like the fence, the urban fence that I'm going to be using pretty much throughout the city. Or I guess that's what I'm doing here. Uh, it's not like I made a... I kind of made a, a, a decision on about that when I was putting this together after I already added a whole bunch. 
Uh, I tried to do that, you know, pick a theme for certain aspects of the city and then just run with it. Because I figured, you know, when, when the city adds those, they usually probably buy it from like one supplier and, uh, you know, they get all their supplies from the same company. In this case, it's wooden fences and benches and trash cans. And here it is, the before and after that uh, will reveal everything that we did in this episode in one convenient shot. Uh, I would like to also take this opportunity to wish everyone a happy April 1st. <laughs> and uh, if you like this video, please consider giving it a like. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. But that's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one.